We're going to switch over to, we talked about um, the Constitution a little bit, liber liberty and um, government overreach. We're going to switch to Second Amendment. So, John, can you give us some of your questions? My question would be about uh, national reciprocity. Have you heard about it, and what do you yes, think about uh, someone it? Said, was it you or somebody said something to me on uh, Facebook, and they sent me the law that says if you have the right to carry in your state and you go into another state that has right to carry, you should have reciprocity. So I think that makes common sense, that if you've been already vetted in one state, you should have the same right in another state. Uh, New Jersey, as you know, it's almost impossible to get um, uh, a, a carry permit. In There's New Jersey. about 200 civilians, less than 200 civilians that have carry permits, and what we found out in New Jersey, in New Jersey, and what we found what, now, I don't know that that's law that's on Facebook, so it must be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, but, but we're talking there about the, there was a link to the HR 68 or something like 38, that. 38. But in New Jersey, there really is about 1,500 permits issued to 2,000 permits, but that is um, friends of the court. Mm -hmm. Ex-law enforcement. Yeah. Ex-law enforcement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But really, there's only civilians, and the, yeah. some of the civilians had to sue and spend money okay. to get there. Here, here's the point I would make on that issue, and this is why having the platform of the United States Senate floor and national television where you can reach, what, 50 million people on a Sunday morning on all the talk shows, is that we should have the same rights as civilians as the police do who protect us. Because we are our first responder. Absolutely. Yeah. I go even further. I, when I've been on radio shows with former prosecutors, Democratic prosecutors, and I say the right of self-defense is a basic human right, if you don't believe me, go to the UN Declaration of Rights. It's number three. It says you have the right to life, liberty, and security of person. What does that mean operationally? What does it mean security of person? So the, the point is, we have to be treated equally. If people have the right to carry because they are part of some class, then we, as the class of citizens who, who elect people into office, we shouldn't have this discrimination that you, that you somehow are not, have the right to carry. Again, proper vetting, I agree with that, proper vetting. Go to the police station, let them check you over, let them look at your background, and then get it. In other words, they can't deny you for anything uh, unless it's something in your record that would That would be flag. what's called a shall issue state. As soon as you yeah. fill up the paperwork, there's nothing to stop the process if you pass that background track. New Jersey is a may issue state, right. meaning they don't. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, this is why, as a senator, you can call up the governor and other members of the legislature and have a chat with them about these laws and then make a case to the public. See, public opinion is very strong all over the country. It's a very powerful way of getting things done. And there's, but there's not enough of us making... Well, this is, why, this, is why this is an opportunity for the people of New Jersey who believe in what we believe in, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, to elect somebody who really believes that rather than just giving lip service to that. That's totally true. What's wrong with just enforcing shall not be infringed? Why, why should we why should we enable this vetting process that has been abused over mm -hmm. and over again not that in in theory it sounds like it could be yeah. compatible with the second amendment but in practice it just isn't well again the political reality is that people think that if uh, anyone can have a concealed carry firearm we'll have the wild west here which was not so wild west when you look at the literature. 90% of the United States allows its citizens to carry. Yeah. So it's, it's a matter of a cultural difference between New Jersey and other parts of the country. New York, New Jersey, and, and, and Connecticut, and California. I mean, we are a huge, huge country with a lot of different values around the country. And it's reflected in their statutes. So again, we need to make a case that freedom means just that. Freedom. Freedom to protect yourself, your family, your business your community. If being in the debates with Hugen and Menendez is I would look them in the eye and say, can you guarantee me that the United States will not be a totalitarian society in the future? Impossible. They can't guarantee that. They can't. No one can guarantee that. Not no even one. the president, not even the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So the point is, the Second Amendment was put there for a reason. Mm -hmm. To make, sure. To make yeah. sure that the people can defend mm -hmm. themselves if, in fact, God forbid, a totalitarian regime takes power. Yeah. 
through executive orders. You don't have to need, you don't need a Congress, complying Congress, you can do it through executive order. Right. We've seen this in our lifetime. Ask the Japanese what happened during World War II. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask what happened to uh, uh, business people when Nixon did wage price controls in 1971. You were a criminal if you didn't adhere to the government's edicts on prices and wages. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to fall into that trap that it can happen here. That's the mistake that people made in Europe. It will never happen here as long as we abolish evil from the earth. If we abolish evil from the earth, there are a whole bunch of things we don't need. But uh, we haven't been able to do it in 10,000 years or even come close. <laughs> Tom had a question. Uh, you know, we're talking about